Hey guys, welcome to Sockless Tech Spot. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to overclock a Raspberry Pi. In my last video, I put on heat sinks, and in this video, I want to see how far I could take it before the Raspberry Pi either starts acting funny or gets destroyed. So, I'm sure you guys are hoping for the latter. I'm not, but if it happens, I'm sure that'll be for an entertaining video. So anyways, uh, let's jump right into this. If you want to see how to install the heat sinks, in, uh, go ahead and check out my previous video in my channel. Um, if you want to buy the heat sinks, check out the description for a link to Amazon where you could buy this video, or buy the heat sinks. You cannot buy this video. But um, anyways, once we got all that taken care of and you want to just get to the fun part, we're going to go into our router. And to access your router, it, might, it depends on what router you have for links. This, uh, your router IP address might be 192.168.1.1. If you're on a TP link, it's probably .0.1. If you're on uh, what's the other one? D-Link. That's also a 0 0.1. But it really depends on uh, what router you have. Check your router for that, or your router's manual for that, or Google it. Up to you. Um, but once you're in your router, you want to find your client list for that um, your router recognizes uh, your DHCP client list. So over here, I have Open Elec, which is my Raspberry Pi, and that is the IP address for my Raspberry Pi, and. Um, for yours, it might be different. It depends what you have installed on your Raspberry Pi. I have Kodi, the Open Elec build, and um, if you have a different operating system, you might see something different. But as long as you know what you're looking for, you're looking for the Raspberry Pi, and you have the IP address, you're good to go. So once we have that set, we're going to go ahead and get another application called, uh, not that, uh, called Putty. Now, Putty is a free application. You could download this. So we, I'll have the link in the description. Mac has built-in uh, SSH capabilities, so um, that, you do that by accessing your terminal, and you could uh, Google how to do that if you would like. Let's get into it. So Putty is just a SSH application which allows you to uh, access a computer remotely, in this case our Raspberry Pi. And the reason we need the IP address is because that's how you access it. So we're just going to go ahead, you can copy and paste the IP address or type it in, but we're going to go ahead and take this IP address. And uh, you can see I already accessed it before, but I'll type it in just for demonstration purposes. And you're just going to type in the IP address of your Raspberry Pi, hit open, and it's connecting, it's connected, and it's asking us to log in. Now depending on what operating system you have and how it's set up, uh, your login is going to be different. For me, it's going to be a username as for root, and password is open elk, and that's the default for open elk. And uh, we're in. So, um, yeah, you might want to make sure what your default password is, or if you have changed it, you might want to figure out what your password is in general. But once you're in, it gets easy. The hard part's done. And what we're going to do is just, um, we're going to start editing the configuration file that's within uh, the Raspberry Pi. So to do that, it's going to be two simple commands, which is right here. And I'll have the link in the description for this as well. And we're just going to copy this first command, so this is going to mount our drive, and we're going to right click inside, and we're going to hit enter. It looks like I did nothing, but I actually did. So basically just mounting and giving ourselves read and write privileges. Um, next we're going to get that config file, and we're going to edit it. Nano is just a text editor. So we're going to get this file in our text editor, hit enter. So now we are in the configuration file of uh, the Raspberry Pi. and if you've never messed with the command line interface, don't worry. Use your arrow keys to come down here, and it says right there, uh, overclock mode settings. So this is really easy stuff. So right now the default is uh, 700 frequency, core frequency is 250, SDRAM frequency, and overvolt. Now what we're going to do is first, things first, is you want to delete these uh, hashtag things here. And that's going to go ahead and activate our. Um, oh, you know what? Let's not disable this. Just, actually, screw it. Let's disable it. Yeah, we're going to leave that disabled. Uh, yours might be a zero for this, um, but you might want to leave it at zero. Um, it avoids your warranty if you change it to one, but we're not going to care. So, right now, uh, up here, you can see like a modest overclock would be up to 700, which is actually what it should be stock at. And you just go down the line and you change the numbers to match with how you want it to be overclocked. So I'll, let's bring it up to 800, see what happens. I'm going to see if I can get a temper, temperature reading on Cody, and then uh, we'll just slowly work our way up here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and type in 8 there. This is going to be 300. Uh, 
100, and this is going to be 400, and that's going to be 0. Okay, so that's done, and we're just going to hit Control X, Y, yes, you want to overwrite it, and then we're going to reboot. Simple as that. We lost connection, meaning it's rebooting, and I'm going to pop up my camera here. So my camera is going to be recording uh, the Cody screen on the TV. I also have my keyboard set up for the maximum, or the lowest possible latency, I should say, between me and the Raspberry Pi. Alright, so I thought I'd save you guys the time, and here are the results of my test. So this is after 2 minutes of video, 720p, and uh, these are different overclocks I did. Um, the Raspberry Pi stopped functioning at 1200 uh, megahertz. Uh, it just wouldn't boot after that, it would just be a black screen and it would say no signal, although the Pi was on, the LED light was on. And it was heating up, so I don't think you could overclock it that much. And if you can, um, it's not going to work with just heat sinks. You're going to need some sort of active cooling in there, such as a fan or something like that. But I'm actually kind of happy with it. It does show that there isn't much of a, of a problem overclocking it because the Raspberry Pi could obviously handle the overclock um, as long as you don't load it too much while you're overclocking it because um, after using it for a little while it did freeze here and there if you would try doing too much with it or if you would um, go from video back to the menu and just browse around really quick it would slow it down and even freeze it so keep that in mind if you are going to overclock it um, you're going to just do pretty much just basic multimedia stuff with it you can't really do much else uh, or else it's just going to crap out on you but there you guys have it. If you guys uh, have done tests on your own and have results or a video or something, go ahead and post it and uh, I'll be happy to take a look at it. It's pretty fun messing with this thing. I can only imagine what the newer model of Raspberry Pi could do. Uh, I really want to get it and play around with it. Lately there's been a lot of those microcomputers out there all competing with each other and um, they're getting pretty good. So uh, there are a few I have my eye on and if I do get them I will post more videos playing around with those. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.